American novelist Sue Monk Kidd, well known for her 2002 book The Secret Life of Bees, wrote a book titled The Mermaid Chair in 2005. In the novel, Jesse Sullivan travels to Egret Island to care for her mentally ill mother Nell. She starts to reflect and consider the issues she needs to face in her life while she is there. After becoming distant from her mother, Jesse finds it difficult to reflect on and reconcile their relationship. But Jesse has to think about more than just Nell. After several decades together, she and her spouse Hugh are in their middle age. For the most part, Hugh is a traditional husband, and Jesse starts to suspect that she might be searching for a kind of independence she has never known. Jesse encounters brother Thomas, a handsome monk who is almost ready to take his final vows but hasn't yet done so, when he's visiting Egret Island. Jesse is dealing with an internal struggle that sets comfort against passion and makes her wonder if the two can coexist. The fact that she and her mother have been tormented by her father's death circumstances for 30 years only serves to further compound her confusion. Sue Monk Kidd frequently writes about individuals whose lives are being affected and changed by traumatic events. Jesse's father perished in a fishing boat explosion. According to accident reports, a gasoline line leak that was probably ignited by a pipe spark was the cause of the incident. It was a pipe that Jesse had given him. Even after more than 30 years, Jesse's guilt still consumes her. After receiving a call from a longtime family friend, Jesse decides to visit her childhood home. Jesse's mother used a carving knife to hack off her finger, as she is plagued by her own problems. Back on her little island in South Carolina, Jesse starts to face her past. In an attempt to mend the long standing trauma to their relationship, she starts by making an effort to make amends with her mother. Jessie learns that her father's death was not actually caused by the pipe she had given him, and this insight reopens past hurts. She also makes the decision to divorce her snobbish husband, whom she believes discredits her. Her rising yearning to be with Brother Thomas, the youngest Benedictine monk on the island, is a contributing factor to her angst. There is also an implication in the story that Father Dominic, the monastery librarian, knows something about Nell's hardships that isn't readily apparent. The book's title is, in fact, derived from the monastery since there is a mysterious chair with exquisite mermaid carvings within. The saint to whom the chair is dedicated was supposedly once a mermaid before being converted. Both brother Thomas and Jesse seem to be attempting to escape a restrictive way of life. For Jesse, it's an unfulfilling marriage. For brother Thomas, it's the seclusion of a monastic existence. The narrative develops into both a romantic tale and a contemplative voyage of self-discovery. When marital life and monastery life are compared as states that the protagonists find restrictive, it might be seen cliched and too simple, particularly in a story about love at first sight. The mermaid chair is full of symbolism. Two instances are Jessie's artwork, which is kept in tiny boxes, and her husband Hugh's dreams of the isolation of outer space. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.